Okay, so I want to talk about how to put these transactions into these T accounts. So normally we'll journalize them, and that is um, what a lot of our problems will be asking us, but in order to understand those journals, it helps us to see what it looks like in T account form. So this helps us because we can easily see why you debit assets to make them increase. It's because they're on the left and we increase them on their left side. We can see that we increase liabilities on their right side. Capital as well, fees earned as well, and then these expenses we increase on their left side. So having this in front of us helps us to keep it, uh, make it make more sense. All right, I've also made um, a list of what we're going to be using our accounts for. So as we go through this problem, we can double check that we're picking the right accounts. So let's do it. A dentist opens a dental practice by depositing $10,000 into a bank account in the business name. So this is a dentist putting personal money into his business as an investment. So if you look at the word capital here, it is used when an owner invests personal money into the business. So that's what we're talking about. So this dentist put in $10,000. We increase the capital account on the right, so that means that we credit it. He placed $10,000 into the business, so that means that the business cash increased. We increase cash on the left, which is a debit. So this first journal entry says debit cash, credit capital. All right, January the 2nd, the dentist business borrows $100,000 from the bank. So. Whenever we borrow money, we're talking about a payable. Notes payable. Use when you buy something and promise to pay later or borrow money from a bank or a creditor. So we're going to increase our notes payable because we now owe the bank $100,000. The bank gave us cash that we put into our business account, so the business cash went up. January the 3rd. The dentist pays for malpractice insurance for the month. So an expense is used when you pay for something that will be used up or consumed within the month. So we paid for insurance that will be used up within the month. So that's insurance expense. And the word pays tells us that we used our cash, so cash goes down. January the 4th, purchase for cash dental equipment, including an x-ray machine. So when we buy equipment, we're talking about this equipment account used when you purchase equipment. So equipment goes up because we got some equipment worth $60,000. And it says that we paid cash. So cash goes down for $60,000. January the 20th. The dentist pays for a billboard to advertise his services for one month. So we're talking about um, advertising because it is something that we're going to pay for that will be used up or consumed within the month. So advertising expense, and it says that we pay, and we pay with cash, so cash goes down for $500. The dentist performs dental services for the first half of the month and receives $8,000 for services rendered. Whenever we see that we've performed services or sold goods, we're talking about revenue. So we have done the work, so we're going to be using fees earned. Use when you provide services or sell goods to a customer. So fees earned goes up for $8,000. Let's look to see if we've gotten the money. It says that we received $8,000. So cash goes up for $8,000. I'm gonna run out of space, so I'm just gonna put it over here. It doesn't matter um, as long as you put your debits here and your credits here. I don't have to keep using up a new line each time. All right, um, pays the dental hygienist $2,500. So this is me paying for an expense, salary's expense because it is something that is going to be used up or consumed within the month. So salary expense goes up by $2,500, and the word pays tells me that my cash goes down by 
bills patients for services rendered that have not been paid. So services rendered says that I have provided the services. So that's fees earned. Use when you provide services or sell goods to a customer. So fees earned will go up by 5,000. Let's look and see if we got the cash. It says that it has not been paid. So if it's not been paid, that means that accounts receivable we use because it is used when your customer owes you money or comes in and pays you on account. So when they owe you money, accounts receivable goes up. When they come in and pay it, it will go down. So I'm going to increase it by $5,000. Okay, so that last journal entry, just to give you an idea, make sure that we still understand that this means we're still debiting and crediting like a regular journal entry, would have been um, bills patients for services rendered. We would debit accounts receivable and credit fees earned. But when we look at an T account, it's just clearer. It's easier for new accounting students to see because we can see, hey, all of our assets did in fact increase on the left. If we needed to reduce them, we did the right-hand side. All right, all liabilities went up on the right. Capital went up on the right. Fees earned went up. And just as a side note, we typically never see our fees earned go down. Okay, we expect just to see increases in fees earned. We just expect to see increases in expenses as well. It is the balance sheet accounts over here that we would expect to go up and down. Cash goes up when you get it, goes down when you pay it. Accounts receivable goes up when your customers owe you, comes back down as they pay you off. Um, equipment goes up as you buy it, and if you were to sell it, it'd come back down. Notes payable goes up as you borrow money, and then as you pay back that loan, it comes back down. So we expect balance sheet accounts to go up and down. We only expect these accounts to go up, okay, because we're just keeping up with how much went towards that type of account. Okay, so the last question could be, what's net income? Well, our net income is revenues minus expenses. We just have one revenue account, and it is equal to 8000 plus 5000 right now, so let's see how much money is in there. Right now we have plus 5,000 is 13,000. So total revenues is 13,000. And then for expenses, we have 500. So we're gonna subtract these out because they're expenses and 2,000 and 2,500. So if we say revenues minus expenses, we can find that we have $8,000 in net income. All right, so let's just see how we get our balances in the other accounts. Um, these are just simply one number, so that is their balance. But in cash, we have more than one number, so we need to add up the increases and subtract out the decreases. So all of our adds are 10,000 plus 100,000 plus 8,000, and then we subtract out the subtractions, minus 2,000 minus 60,000 minus 500 minus 2,500. So we have a balance of 53,000, and we put it on its normal side because it's on the increase side. If it happened to be a decrease, that would mean that we are overdrawn and we have negative cash. But we have 53000 right now in our account. So let me know if you have any questions.